Greeting sisters and brothers in Christ. We begin our worship this day in the name of God who created us, Jesus Christ who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who comforts and sustains us. Amen. Our gospel reading for this fourth weekend of Lent is from the Gospel of John, the third chapter, verses 14 through 21. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe in him are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of our Lord, thanks be to God. And the title of our message for this, as we enter this fourth week of Lent, is God can turn something bad into something good. And let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So there is an old Yiddish tale, and it varies, but it's along these lines. There was a farmer who had a son, and his son helped him with all of his farming. But the son fell and broke his leg. So that was a very bad thing, right? Well, about that time, uh, the enemy army was coming against this town. And so the town had to raise up all the able-bodied young men to fight in the war against their enemies, the enemy army. So because this young man had a broken leg, of course, he was not able to fight. That, in a, in a sense, turned out to be a good thing, right? And then, you know, the story varies, but you know, okay, so say all of the crops were burned, that was a very bad thing. But then when the enemies came, they seized all the crops, um, but they didn't have anything to seize from this farmer because you know, all of his crops had burned. So was that a bad thing or was it a good thing? And that's the gist of the Yiddish tale, that sometimes something that might seem really bad to us, and, and in a sense is bad, um, God can still bring something good, even from something bad. And so, um, that's kind of the story from today's first lesson, which we did not read, but it's in the book of Numbers. It's the story of the people of Israel wandering in the wilderness, and um, they are complaining against God and against Moses because they don't like the food in the desert. <laughs> so God sends quail and manna, and they still, Sorry, uh, uh, vehicles going by here on the beach. God sends quail and manna, 
water from a rock and they still complain. So what happens is there are these poisonous, these toxic snakes that bite many of the people and they die and they interpret that as God is punishing them for complaining. Um, and so, and they're terrified. So um, God says to Moses, tell, make a snake out of bronze and put it on a staff and hold it up so that everyone who looks upon that snake um, will be healed, will be healed. So snakes, what do they represent? Are they a bad thing or are they a good thing? Well, in the story of Moses, um, it's both, right? Initially, the snakes are a bad thing. They uh, are toxic, they're poisonous, they bite the people and the people die. But today, as you know, the, the symbol for physicians is a staff with a snake on it, and it symbolizes healing. Um, and that's because when Moses raised up the staff with the snake on it, it did represent healing. Um, I had a dream recently, and it was about snakes. And I was on a beach like this. Here I'm um, at Panama City Beach, Florida. And um, I have to say, since I've been here, I've been here just a couple of days, Ted and I are here on vacation, my husband Ted and I, and you know, this condo was an inheritance from my parents. And of course, when my parents died, that was a very, very terrible, tragic event for my sisters and for me. Um, but we'd never seen their condos. And then when we came here, I decided to keep one as my part of the inheritance. So from something very sad, very tragic, came this amazing gift that I continue to enjoy through my parents' generosity. So again, sometimes something that's very bad, God can bring something very good from it. So during this season of Lent, I had a dream that I was on a beach and there were snakes all over the ground. Um, and I was kind of frightened, but when I bent down to pick up one of these snakes, it was actually a root or a branch of a tree. And you know I'm a tree person. And so it turned out to be something not scary at all. And I looked up the symbolism of snakes in dreams, and they can mean either something very bad, toxic, toxic people, or they can mean, um, they can be a symbol of transformation and new life. Just as in the story of Moses, it was both. They were symbolic of the people's sin, of their whining and complaining against God and Moses but they, the snake on the staff turned out to be a symbol of something good and positive, of new life. Uh, in today's Gospel from John, um, the Jesus upon the cross is paralleled with the serpent that Moses raised up on the staff. Just as the people gazed at that, um, snake on the staff and saw the bad thing that they had done and the, and, the, and the suffering and the death that it had caused. So they also were healed. They were made whole. They were transformed and given new life. So at the beginning of this season of Lent, I invited all of us to see Lent as an invitation to a new beginning, to examine our lives and die to those things in our lives that we know are not good, that we know are not of God, that we know are leading us further away from God and to turn from those things and turn back to God. So I invite you to think about what that was in your life, that bad thing, Maybe you still haven't really faced it, but 
I invite you to have the courage of the Israelites to really face that bad thing in your life and to be a realist, to, to own it, to acknowledge it, and to ask God to turn you from that and to bring transformation and new life. I want to share something from my own life that's happened this Lent. So at the beginning of Lent, um, we had a very bad thing. My husband and I had a very bad thing that happened to us. Um, we kind of felt like the rug was ripped out from under us. We had a situation where we came to realize that we can no longer stay in our home in Newport, a home that we really love and that has been my husband's home for his entire life and my home since our marriage almost 18 years ago. Um, and we realize part of this is because of his illness, Parkinson's disease, and that our home, which is built in the 1800s, is just very difficult to make accessible. Um, also, my husband refused to move. I love this home, this is my home, I want to live here till I die. So I was really at a loss as to what to do. How can I make a home from the 1800s accessible? I don't have the money, I don't have the, it's kind of impossible architecturally, structurally. Um, also, his family did not want us to sell the home because they have great emotional attachment to this home. So what we felt like, what could we possibly do? And then just two weeks ago, we went for a Sunday drive. Five miles from our home in Portsmouth, there we saw signs for new homes. And just on a whim, we drove down and had a beautiful view of the bay. And then we saw these new model homes, eco-friendly. Um, and there was one was open, we were able to go in and it was a very open layout, something that my husband with his walker and someday with a wheelchair would be able to live in because it's very accessible. I asked the realtor if it could be made completely accessible in, in terms of the doorways, wider doorways and an accessible bathroom and she called the developer and said that the particular model we looked at could be made completely accessible. My husband looked around and my stubborn husband who refused to move looked around and said I'm sold and one of his children, his daughter, will be buying our home, uh, his family home. So something that began in the season of Lent as a very bad thing that we would have to leave our home, the home we thought we would live in till the day we died, the home we, um, we did many home improvements and made it just the way we wanted to live in it for the rest of our lives. But the reality, the hard reality that we had to look at, like the serpent on the cross, if you will, was that it was not going to be possible for us to stay in our beloved home. But God takes something that's bad and turns it into something good. We now have signed an agreement brand new home that will be completely accessible, that will cost us less money each month, and my husband's family is happy that this beloved family home will be able to stay in his family. So sisters and brothers, this Lent, what is it for you that is something bad that God can turn into something? It is possible with Christ, our transformation, our resurrection, and our life. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with blessing and grant you peace. Amen.